In our last video, we were talking about the rotation of conic sections. Again, really challenging for like the typical college algebra course. Algebra 2 course wouldn't have this. It's a pretty advanced topic, but we're going to finish this since we've gone this far. So if you're following along with this, uh, take a look here. We're going to basically, this first question is going to do the same thing. We're going to just graph one of these. It's actually going to be a strange one to graph, but we're going to do the same thing we did in the last video. So first of all, here's our update. We are basically going to switch out from the regular rectangular system to this rotated system. And so what we started with was we found cotangent of the double angle. Again, I, I don't have the proof for where this comes from. I'm sure it's uh, reliable in your local friendly calculus book. Um, it might be in the open stacks. I didn't see it. but So we are doing A minus C over B. Well, here's A. It's 1. C is negative 4. B is 12. So put all that in here. We get the cotangent of 2 theta is 5 over 12. Let's see if they build. Okay, so, well, I'm going to just build my own. Okay, so we have adjacent over opposite. And now they've chosen another one again. You would just do the Pythagorean theorem to finish this, but this is a 5, 12. This is always 5, 12, 13. That's a special one. Now, what we're going to need is the cosine of that double angle. So if you use this triangle, the cosine in this is going to be 5 over 13. So we need this in the half angle formulas. So we need this for the half angle. So here's cosine of the double angle. We're trying to find sine and we're trying to find cosine. So we plug those in, we do all our algebra manipulation, and here's our sine and here's our cosine. Now we're going to put those into our rotated form. So this is the regular Cartesian, but we're going to, this is going to tell us what x would be in the rotated system. Drop that in, crunch it down. We do it again for y. Here's our Cartesian system. Here's our rotated system. We drop those in, simplify. And so here's our dictionary that allows us to convert between the two systems. All right, so we go back to the formula now. We've got, well, I guess we got them here. Replace an x's with our new rotated one, our y's with our new rotated y's. We get all this. Now, a lot to do here, but just like before, we're squaring the top and the bottom. Multiplying 2 squared of 13s here is going to make a 13. So I don't know if we've got all the math. All of this is going to make a bunch of 13s on the bottom. You're eventually going to multiply both sides by 13. This is where the 390 is coming from. So a lot of foiling, a lot of distri distributing, and a lot of weird notation. But it's still just algebra. And we're just going to combine our like terms. And the reason we did this is the new rotated term is going to drop out of there. Oh, yeah. Okay, it does drop out of there. So this, this, and this will drop out. We combine everything else. I've already gotten rid of the 13 by multiplying it over to the other side. Okay, now we don't want to leave it like this. We divide through every, every term by 390, so we can get it looking like this. Okay, so we have a hyperbola because we've got the negative in there. And now this is a strange one, but here's our rotated equation. And if you remember how this works, we're going to get to the hyperbola with the square root of this number, the square root of 6. So we're going to go along this axis. Square root of 6 is this length. Square root of 6 is this. And then we make the asymptotes. When I graph them, I don't usually make the asymptotes, but it was, we make these lines. So it'd be, this is a little weird with the, the four on top, but I think this would be like, you'd be doing that. The square root of 15, four, it's really difficult, but I wouldn't expect that. If you could just get this far on the rotated one, you're using the square root of six to go up that x-axis, back that x-axis, and you can make the parabolas. Okay. All right, here's our last portion in this rotated section here. It turns out there's a version of the discriminant for these conic sections as well. B squared minus 4ac, just like it was for a quadratic. And um, I was trying to think this through to see if this is kind of intuitive why they get all of these different things. But you calculate the discriminant and you can tell whether it's going to be an ellipse, a conic section, or a, or a hyperbola. I think it's kind of easy just to tell by looking at it, but here we go. So if you think about this, um, 
An ellipse is going to have the A and C term would be the same sign. They would always be the same sign. So if that's the case, we're multiplying the same sign. I think that's why we're going to get this to be larger here. So these are going to stay the same sign, so we're going to be subtracting a big number. I think that's why this is going to turn out to be negative. And then with the hyperbola, the, the A and C are going to have different signs, which would then, if they have different signs, it's going to make this a positive. And I think that's why we'd get it greater than. I'm not sure here on the parabola why if you do the uh, discriminant. So a parabola wouldn't have both the x squared term and the y squared term. It would only have one. So I don't know what that does to the rotation, but somehow it turns out that the a b squared minus 4ac turns out to get you the same thing. The, the b squared and the 4ac are equal. Well, it turns out they, yeah, they equal zero. So let's just follow along. So some of it makes reasonable sense to me that the, um, the uh, parabola one, I'm not quite sure why, but let's do it. So we're going to just knock out the discriminant here. So we've got b squared minus 4ac. Okay, we calculate that. Here's our, just doing our, our arithmetic. Calculate it down, we get a negative 28. Well, if, if this discriminant is less than zero, we know that's an ellipse. When we do it again here, we've got b squared minus 4a is this, c is this. Crunch that down, we get negative 228 when, once again, we're less than zero, so once again, we get an ellipse. Okay, let's try one more here. We've got b squared minus 4ac. So my, we're going to calculate this first one. b squared is going to be negative 9 squared minus 4ac. So I've got 81 minus 12. Now, this is going to be greater than 0. And so that was, let me see here. I can't remember them all. Greater than 0 is going to get us a hyperbola. So this first one is going to be a hyperbola. OK. Now let's try again for this one here. So b squared is going to be once again be negative 9 squared minus 4ac. So we've got 81 minus 80. Yeah. So we're going to be greater than 0. And once again, we get a hyperbola. That's not what I was expecting. What have I done wrong here? Uh, 4 a c oh yeah sorry this is 16 so this is 160 so this is going to be less than zero that's why we get the ellipse okay so the discriminant can help us tell what we're going to have uh, which formula we're going to have well yeah no i guess i can see the point here the reason we need the discriminant here is the rotation i think because we have an xy term that's made it more complicated when we first did this in the beginning of 8.4 we didn't have an xy term when we were looking at the general formulas for the different conic sections so the rotation piece here makes it a little more complicated and so we've used the discriminant to help us identify which kind of conic section we have